Snuff Dog. Uh, hey. Okay, so in response, so my mother's nice. It's a fella name. My mother's nice. I think it's a, a fella. I tend to call people fellas, even if they're women, men or women. Uh, asked me to talk about Mars. A subscriber called My Mother's Nice, and I said I wasn't going to do it. I said I was disenfranchised by the way you said, you're not going to do it. Please do it, but you're not going to do it. And I, my impulse was like, as you were like, please do it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I read, but you won't. And I was like, well, no, I guess I won't then. But that was kind of me being a dick. And I, I just I just moved past it, and, uh, and now I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about Mars, the candy bar. So Mars bars, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm in my closet right now looking for something. Um, Mars, the planet Mars, dude. Are you fascinated with Mars the way I'm fascinated with Mars? Yo, we're going to Mars. It's happening soon, too. The way society is structured now, things happen so rapidly, like with 3D printing. I just got a table. It's an L-shaped table. Well, it's a, it's a shelf. So like it's like four shelves up high and then two down here. Can you picture what I'm talking about? It's a giant L shaped and it's going to be my spice rack. Maybe I can, uh, oh, I'm also doing laundry right now. So my alarm's going to go off when, uh, when the dryer's done. The way so I can like feel the energy, I think from the caffeine and maybe the excitement of talking about Mars. Oh, I shaved by the way, which you probably see. I'm sure someone will mention it if I don't. Uh, yesterday, somebody was like, yo, dude, you look like facial hair, man. The guy that keeps asking about the, the zoo, talking about the zoo. So, like, am I the animal at the zoo? I thought you were just making fun of the zoo story. Uh, if you haven't read the zoo story, by the way, that that play is fucking awesome. That's an intense play. A friend of mine, Jason Campbell, in college played Peter, and Brandon Bruce played... No, no, Jason played Jerry, and Brandon played Peter, and I didn't see the show, but everyone talked about it. I mean, that if you want to look for a good two-person show, that show uh, is a fantastic opportunity to show what you can do as an actor. Fancy. Oh God. I have a, a monologue memorized from, you know, let me tell you why I went. Actually, let me tell you about some things. I told you about the first floor in the, the boarding house where I lived. See, I, see, that's the monologue. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it's, a, it's, it's spectacular. I should probably do a monologue on YouTube someday. Just do monologues. I'm going to continue to talk about Mars. So the way society's shaping up, we're building like rapidly constructive proper principles. Like we're, we're proliferating the ability to create. So just like how digital media allows information to travel at the speed of light, like back in the day there was newspapers, you know? So in order for someone else to read what you're reading, you had to give them a physical copy of the newspaper. Now, it's, it's a data. It doesn't take up any physical space that we see. It takes up a little bit of physical space, but nothing that you, would, it's, that you could see with your own eyes. You know, it's digital. And so a piece of information can be a bunch of places at once. It doesn't have to be. An, and, and the way we're building now is working like that. Like, I think a lot about building space stations and, you know, like giant spaceships in space. So it might seem like size is an issue. But when you, when you realize the way we can proliferate creation, proliferate's a great word, by the way. If you don't know what that means, pause the video, go look it up. I love that word, prolifer proliferation, proliferate. It means to make a lot of something. Um, we can, like, in space, we can create little tiny drones that can build other little tiny drones and just let them go to work. And we can build like, I, I've talked about this in, in another video at some point. They can build billions and billions and just keep, and then the more they build, the faster that they'll be able to build more, then the faster that they'll be able to build more. And this is like a terrifying principle of AI getting out of control. Uh, but it's also a super powerful technique humans can use for their tools. So we can build drones that build other drones. And just, you know, you get your like 70 trillion drones out there in space. And then each little drone can be have like a little laser cutter on it or, or be able to have little hands on it and can like build a space station really fast. So think of it like a grid. Like um, have you ever seen those drones flying in, uh, in formation? There's like, like, you know, you can radio control one drone and fly it around. But when you can on a computer like 
have a bunch of points on a graph and each point represents one of the drones in the sky and then you can like move them around and all the drones will just fly in this giant formation so if you have a trillion drones in space they can all simultaneously construct a giant space station uh with like pinpoint accuracy because of because of fucking physics man because of calculus really we we uh, we mathematics is so amazing it's enabled us to do so much and so i think what's going to happen is very soon we're going to be on mars and we'll all be taking trips there it'll be like you know it might be seventy thousand dollars for a round trip two week vacation or a one week stay but it's coming very rapidly in our lifetime and th- a lot of things are happening like this uh that the, it seems like a fantasy then all of a sudden they figure out how to do it then all of a sudden Everyone can do it. It's magic. It's magical. It's it's actually just just reality. You just got to kind of accept it. Mars, I got a little fear of like, well, what if, what if there's war? What if we, you know, but like, no, nobody wants war. We want peace. We all want to go to Mars. We want to be able to spread out. We want our space. Isn't that funny? You have your space and then there's space. These words, man, the way we use and reuse words. Um, I, I wouldn't go to Mars first. Would you? I don't think I would go to Mars first because like Elon Musk, I don't know if you've seen Elon Musk talk about Mars. He's the one like, um, Tesla, he's the CEO of Tesla Motors and Solar City, And, uh, oh God, what's his SpaceX who is, he's like the driving force behind Mars colonization right now. And then I think, Another company just came out and said that they were going to beat him to the planet. So now there's like competitive force in action about getting people to Mars. And of course, hopefully business won't overtake safety, but it's going to be like the pioneer days. You know, a lot of the pioneers back in probably in like American pioneers, not that the genocide was tolerated. I don't I don't think about it like that. Like I wouldn't support it now, but they probably died and we just never heard about them. Like I imagine that a lot of people in history have died and you just never heard about it. You know, there tends to be a lot of stories about the great stuff and not a lot of stories about what didn't work. So I can imagine how how dangerous that must have been. And I mean, they obviously they were fighting other humans, but, you know, in space, we're going to be battling against the atmosphere, more or less. And and the. The uh, isolation of being on another planet, but you have the Internet, there might be a delay, there will definitely be a delay on the Internet. But they'll be able to watch YouTube videos and upload YouTube videos and stuff. Just might take like 14 hours for it to get to Earth. <laughs> it's going to be fucking, it's fucking awesome. Oh my God, it's fucking, it's so, it's so cool. Uh, I would go though. I, I'll definitely go. You catch me on the right day, I would have said I wouldn't go. And then you, you talk to me now, man. I'm, I'm definitely going to Mars. I like the idea of space travel. I really want to have like a zero grad. I think that everyone should have a zero gravity chamber in their house on earth. I think eventually it's going to be as common as a refrigerator. You'll just be able to go into a room, you know, close the door, flip the switch and, and just float. This is why we got to come together as a species because there's so many cool things we can do. Like all these, all these dreams and possibilities of you flying through the air and and like, swim you know it's all possible it's all technologically possible and and the technology gets smaller like a jet pack is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you're not even able to see it but it's still going to be lifting you and you'll just look like you're flying through the air that's that's you know I, obviously i want i i, I don't want, i want to not see people get hurt like i can think about the negatives of it what i don't want i don't want this i don't want to see people get hurt i don't want to have people be in pain but you know, that's not my reason for being. My reason for being is to create this cool stuff and to inspire people to create this cool stuff and inspire people to inspire people to inspire people to inspire people! Uh, let's do it. Let's go to Mars. Will you go to Mars with me? Let's start a GoFundMe or something. I don't think that's really necessary. Mm. 
Mars is calling your name It really is Mars um, I talked about this before like That planet fascinates the shit out of me Oh, did you hear they uh, they think they found the closest habitable planet to Earth that's not in our solar system is in a in a star system. The star is called Proxima Centauri. It's it's like 4.2 light years away, and uh, they believe that Proxima B is the closest Earth-like planet to us. And Proxima B rests 10 times closer to Pro Proxima Centauri than Mercury is to the sun. So it's 10 times closer to the star than Mercury is to our star. Which So it's super close to the star, but the star is a thousand times weaker than the sun. It's like a red dwarf. So it just happens to be habit in the habitable zone, they think. They're not 100% sure, but they're calculating it with uh, simulations, running tests and simulations on it due to, like, density. Uh, they assume it has a thin atmosphere. If it doesn't have a thin atmosphere, they might be totally off base about this, but they think that it's a water planet, that it's very possible the entire planet is covered by water. It's likely that it has, like, a metallic core, Two-thirds of the planet is metallic. I actually read there's two ideas. One is that two-thirds of the planet is metallic. Then there's a crust. Then there's oceans. The other is that it's half of the planet is like metallic, and the other half of the planet is water, which seems to me like probably less likely. I feel like it... I mean, who knows with something that close to a, a red dwarf. Distance works like uh, space. Like the way it seems like it takes a long... It's you know, traveling, it's like, oh, I got to pass out 50 million newspapers to 50 million people. Actually, all you got to do is upload it, and 50 million people will all sit down and read it at the same time. Distance is going to be like that, too. It already kind of is, but once we work on gravitational warp, well, once we start to perfect gravitational warp, you're going to realize that space is coming to you. It's always, like, there. It's tough to explain. Sometimes I feel like my ideas are, like, 200 years early, but then t I realized that time is also an illusion of state, like distance and matter. Time can rapidly change and shift. Like someone was like, it's going to take, what'd they say? Oh, something about taking a long time to get something done. Like we can implement these changes in the government, but, it, but it's going to take 10 years to get it, to get it through. Like you see these Assumptions that by 2030, Germany will no longer be selling carbon-burning uh, cars. Germany now has a plan to cease all production of the internal combustion engine by 2030, and you're only going to be able to buy electric or hydrogen cell cars. But then someone else was like, it's going to take them t 10, 15 years to get it done? Dude, we, we fought and won World War II in four years. Like, World War II was a huge undertaking, but everyone focused on it together. Like, dude, if we, how much time do you waste during the day? I think about this myself. How much time do I just sit here and not get these amazing, spectacular things done? How much time that if we were really working on it, that we could be getting this like immense studies done? You know, one guy, Elon Musk, he does, he's like one guy but all day he just walks around and, and he's constantly like, I don't know, doing equations or whatever the fuck he's doing to figure out and implement new technologies. And he's like one guy doing it. What if 60 million of us were doing it? We'd be floating in the sky right now on giant balloons that look like pieces of land that are floating because they're lighter than the hydrogen in the air. They're lighter than the oxygen in the air. You know, we can be the thing about a balloon because I had this idea that. You know, I'm huge on the space elevator and, and finding cheaper ways to get rockets into orbit. So I texted or I Twittered, I tweeted uh, Elon, what if we uh, used a balloon to help get the rocket up into the lower atmosphere and then fired it off to save on fuel costs? And other people were like, nah, you, the balloon wouldn't be able to lift the weight. But I started, I'm thinking a lot about balloons and the way they work because the bigger a balloon gets, the more weight it can lift. But it's not a direct relationship. The, 
as it gets bigger, it can produce exponentially more weight. It can create uh, and, and pick up exponentially more weight. So if you had like, like a, a huge balloon, it's similar to a boat in the water. Like uh, boats are made of metal, but they still float because they're so big and there's so much air inside of them. So if you had a really huge, and it doesn't have to be, don't think of it necessarily as like a latex balloon, but if you had a huge, very thin, solid structure that was vacuumed out, it could, it could, it could carry cities. Huge, it could carry huge, huge amounts of weight. And not only could we use that to get stuff into orbit, but we could live on stuff like that. Like we could just live in floating cities. That'd be something cool to build. Well, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna write. Oh, hey, there's this 11-year-old comedian. She's hilarious. Uh, what's her name? Hold on a second. This girl's fucking Saffron Hurden. I'll put a link to her, a blog I just wrote about her. She's 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 really funny. So I think I'm gonna build this L-shaped platform and uh, go write about what's my next topic. I think the next thing I'm going to write about, there's a lot of stuff about politics. Have you noticed that? Like on Facebook, I keep going on Facebook and I see like Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton. Do you, I mean, are you as fed up with that, as annoyed with that as you were just now listening to me say that? Because I, I'm almost like unfollow everyone on my Facebook feed. I can't, I mean, I, I don't want to look at that stuff right now. We need to come together as a citizenry and really focus on a new style of government. Maybe like online voting where there's like a real time database. But then today I was like, even if Donald Trump won the popular vote, the electoral college would vote Hillary in anyway. And that's like the reason we have the electoral college there in the first place is so that dumb idiots don't win the popular popular vote just by like emotion. It keeps people like Hitler out of power because you know, these people in the electoral college understand that the system is delicate. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the Electoral College, but I, this is exactly why we have an Electoral College. I like pe people are herd animals for sure. You know, I have a lot of faith in, in human humanity's ability to individualize. But it's so weird when people are like, like someone was saying that there's that people are tweeting like, what if let's repeal the 17th Amendment, which is what gives women the right to vote because Donald Trump could win if women couldn't. It's like, dude, people are really like that. Some people are really like, it's so weird that people are angry. Like, what are people angry about, man? What are you, ang are you angry? I'm not angry right now, but like, I get it. Like, it, 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 if, if a bomb dropped on, on your house or your neighbor's house, you'd be pissed off. I get it, but what are Americans angry about right now? What the fuck do we have to be angry about? We live in the best, arguably the best country in the world. We get up. We have the freedom to do whatever the fuck we want all day, every day. You might be in a job that maybe you don't want to do, but you have the freedom to leave and get another job. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I mean, as long as you're not infringing on other people's rights, what are, you, what, what, what are they angry about? Well, I don't get it. So I'm staying real positive and focusing on what we can create together. What do you want to create together? I, I keep picturing us like sitting down. I, pick, I can see myself like writing like I can just picture myself like like writing an equation uh, something like thermodynamics this is something that we got to do the first law of thermodynamics says that when you're looking at a system a closed system temperature plus well temperature multiplied by the pressure are going to give you the amount of the size of the system so a system is a certain size if you increase the temperature of that system, it's going to expand or the pressure is going to increase in the system. Now you also, here's another system. If you increase the pressure in this system, it's either going to expand or the temperature is going to go up. So pressure and temperature both are like this in a system that's a stable system. But this law was written in like the 1840s and they wrote this law to figure out how to get water out of wells that had flooded. 
And it made a lot of sense that, you know, for, for like a mechanical system, this law makes sense. But this 170 year old law now, you, every once in a while you'll see people like, nope, can't get more energy out of a system than you put into it because of the law of thermodynamics. But what they don't realize is there's no such thing as a closed system. So if, if you increase the pressure or temperature in a system, it may not expand. And a system might expand that you didn't change the pressure or temperature of because energy is coming into the system from outside. And it's also going from the system into the outside. There's no such thing as like a solid wall that can stop energy. And this is what quantum physics is all about. This is why zero point energy is a real thing and fusion is possible. If you know what ignition is, it's the point in fusion when the generator is producing enough electricity or energy to continue to power itself. So you, it's like the sun. The sun is in a state of fusion, an ignited fusion right now. And for instance, if you took, there's this guy, I've, I've talked, definitely talked about this before. And this is something we could do in space. Elon, t try this out for a size. If you want to figure out how to create like a electric generator in space, like a, a fusion core generator that'll power your ship as long as the sun has been like eight, truly eight billion years or whatever. If you want like an eight billion year generator. Get salt water in a ball. You might have seen this guy, John Kansas, lit salt water, hydrogen salt water on fire. So you put water in space, it becomes a sphere. And then you fire a magnetic current through it, and it lights up like a hydrogen ball, giving off so much heat that if you capture that heat, you can use it to power the electromagnetic wave that's igniting the sphere, that's causing the heat that powers the wave that ignites the sphere. It, 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 you've ignited it, basically. You've hit the state of ignition. They've actually, in California, there's a laboratory that has, uh, they have, uh, did, they, did they, I don't know if it's, not JPL. It's not the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. There's another, like, central Southern California laboratory that has been working on fusion. And it's like this giant laser. And they're like, causing it in this little space and I don't think they when I wrote the story like two years ago they didn't had yet to hit ignition but what I'm thinking about is in space when you when you have salt water in a sphere the, the bigger the sphere the more heat it's going to get off get off the more heat it's going to give up like but it's not a it's not like you put in like a little bit like if you have no water and you put in like an ounce of water it's going to give off maybe 10 points of heat then if you put in two ounces of water it's not going to give off 20 points of heat. It's going to give off more than 20 points of heat because the area, the surface area increases faster than the mass. It's not a direct relationship. It's a, it's a, I don't know if you call it a radiotic relationship or a ratio. And, and I'm totally into it, man. <laughs> and I'm totally into it. Nah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm going to hit stop now. See ya.